Hello, one and all, it's my video, Doc Stone, chapter 191, Divine Scream Down to Earth, and oh my freaking god, I love this chapter. Oh my freaking god, I love this chapter. I mean, seriously, when Brody mentioned Joel's wristwatch, my hands literally started to shake, because I realized this has been Joel's plan all along, to get the radio receiver inside the vault with the Medusa. And I figured, okay, you know what, now Sanko's gonna activate from South America, and they're gonna win that way. Yay. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. They had a much, much bigger plan in mind. It wasn't Sanku's voice, though it sounded very, very similar. It was the voice of a god raining down from the heavens above. The Y man has once again managed to petrify the entire earth, and oh my freaking god, I love it. Oh my freaking god, I love it. And what's more, as I read this chapter again and again and again, I realize this has been the culmination of the entire series. Everything that's happened up to this point has been leading to this very moment. I mean, the healing power of Medusa, the thing that allowed Senku's people to run towards their certain death, was first introduced way back when Sukusa first broke uh, Senku's neck, and then later on confirmed when Senku used the power to revive Sukusa's little sister and she wasn't brain dead anymore. The Y Man, he was first introduced almost 100 chapters ago, right before Treasure Island Arc, and then when that arc finished, he started giving out the signal, 12,800,000 meters, one second, at repeated regular intervals. That's the thing we all forgot about. That signal was repeating again and again and again. And in fact, Zeno confirmed a few chapters ago that he was picking up on those signals as well, meaning that the signals were able to reach North America. But what's more than that, he referred to them as king size radio waves which I definitely think is important. I mean, let's not forget, the receiver is currently inside a very, very thick vault. I don't think Senku's little rinky-dink radio would be able to pierce that, especially all the way from South America. That's why Brody is so concerned about shutting down their own radio instead of worrying about Senku's. But the Y-Man, his king-size radio waves, oh, they would definitely have the power to pierce through the vault and manage to reach the Medusa inside. And just speaking of Joel's wristwatch, there's one panel on the page where he gets his hand slammed into the vault where you can see him pressing a button on the watch. He's activating the receiver on it and the page is just so busy you don't even notice it and I freaking love that. I also just love Joel. I mean, seriously, the man gets his hand literally crushed inside a vault and he not only manages to avoid passing out from the pain, but also manages to continue sounding arrogant, saying, you know, I'm doing this because you interrupted my toast and that really ticked me off. Oh, I love Joel. I freaking love Joel, but I love everyone else as well in this chapter because, oh god, everyone works so hard to get Joel to the vault. I'm pretty sure Kinro's entire purpose this chapter was literally just to be a meat shield to protect Joel so he'd get close enough to the vault where, you know, Joel could then play dead beneath him and then reach in and grab it. Love Kinro, but what I also love is just the teamwork between these other four. Moe's manages to get the key away from Brody's neck. Homer manages to grab it from the air. Uh, Kurosami manages to grab it before the enemy does and toss it to Magma. He manages to open the vaults. Just the coordination these four have is freaking amazing. What's more, these four were villains. Seriously, one point or another, all four of these characters kind of tried to murder Senko. Yeah, you remember that? And now here they're willing to risk their life being utterly shot to pieces for the sake of fulfilling Senko's final order to them. And I freaking love that. I also just love the look on Homer's face when she gets shot. I mean, you can just so see the pain in her eyes. Oh god, that's amazing. That is so freaking amazing. I also just really do appreciate Brody this chapter. I mean, yes, he's the antagonist. He's basically a villain, but it certainly was not easy for him to watch all these children get brutally, brutally murdered in front of him as he sheds one super manly tear. And then right after that, he reaches down to grab Medusa. Why? I mean, is he just planning on taking this somewhere else? Does he want to, you know, do some test investigations on it? Or is it possible that he was planning on using it on everyone who just died right there? That he was planning on saving the members of the Kingdom of Science? Maybe not necessarily reviving all of them, but at least, you know, maybe creating the opportunity to revive some of them down the road? I could definitely see him doing that. I mean, he certainly seemed like the most human of the soldiers so far, so really, really curious about that. And then we come to the end of the chapter, and I have a lot of questions about that. I mean, first and foremost, did the entire Earth just get petrified? I mean, certainly no North America and South America, but what about Japan? Because let's not forget, when the Y Man first petrified the world 3,000 years ago, he used a whole bunch of Medusas, and now he just has one. So is it possible that just one doesn't have, you know, the battery power necessary in order to, you know, reach all the way to Japan? I mean, that certainly would make a certain amount of sense. On the other hand, it might just be, you know, the Y-Man used so many back then for the sake of redundancy. Essentially, you know, activating them each with a certain delay to make sure that no one would be able to survive, you know, being petrified. That they would all be turned to stone. <sighs> not sure. I'm really not sure about that. I mean, if the entire Earth really hasn't turned to stone, we're basically left with two possibilities. First off, you know, you wait 3,000 years for someone else to wake up, start this whole process all over again. 
Or secondly, you know, let's not forget Chrome had the idea a few chapters back to create some sort of device that sprayed vial fluid on himself over and over again every couple minutes. That would be, you know, very, very helpful right about now. Hopefully he's had time to build it or he'll have time to build it in the next couple minutes because, yeah, otherwise this is going to be a very, very long wait. Uh, next up, we have the issue of speed, which is definitely an issue because, you know, when the petrification happened 3,000 years ago, it went very, very quickly. I think like 1,000 miles per hour. But when it happened on Treasure Island, it was only going like 30 miles per hour. And yet, in both cases, it was confirmed to be going at a constant speed, which, uh, confusing? Definitely confusing. I mean, the best guess I can come up with up to this point is that the speed is based on the distance. You know, if you're trying to petrify a small area, it goes at a small speed. But if you're trying to petrify a large area, then it goes at a large speed for whatever reason. I mean, that makes the most amount of sense of anything I can think of right now, but I'm really not sure about that. Speaking of speed, though, even at its maximum possible speed, it'll still take around 10 to 15 minutes for it to reach Senku in South America, which, you know, is a really, really big deal. I mean, yes, Medusa can cure some rather serious injuries and maybe even revive the slightly recently deceased. Uh, that's still up for debate. But it has a limit. I mean, for instance, if Stanley were to take his gun and start shooting Senku in the head over and over again, yeah, the Medusa probably wouldn't be able to fix that. Honestly, I'm not even sure if Medusa is going to be able to fix Joel's arm because it's been badly, badly crushed, and you know, he is a watchmaker, he kind of needs his arms, his finely tuned hands, so that might be bad, that might be very, very bad for Joel, hope he's okay, uh, rather, rather curious about that, but yeah, so next chapter, oh, next chapter's definitely be interesting, I mean, I'm really not sure what to expect, I still don't know if Medusa's gonna go all the way to Japan, or just, you know, stop short when it reaches South America, What's Stanley going to do when he sees the Medusa start coming towards him again? Is he going to, you know, try and finish off Senku, do enough damage to make sure the Medusa can't actually revive him? I can certainly see Senku try to do another, you know, Treasure Island where he throws Vile Fluid up, only for Stanley to shoot it out of the air before it lands and hits him. <laughs> oh, I could definitely, definitely see that. Please link us down below. Uh, what exactly do you think is going to happen next? Because I am very, very confused and curious. Can not freaking wait for next chapter? Let me think all down below. Be sure to like, subscribe to the next video. Until then, peace!